Hello. Today we're going to continue with some more watercolor painting. Using those paints, some brushes, and some paper. I'm going to paint another weird beast, I think. Unless, of course, it ends up being something else. Alright, let's start. Now, in these past one or two or three watercolor paintings that I've done recently, I've started using hot pressed watercolor paper. And I don't know all the intri intricacies, all the ins and outs of the construction of watercolor paper. I haven't seen a How It's Made episode of it. But I do know that hot pressed watercolor paper is way, way smoother than the cold press paper I was using when I first started getting into watercoloring some time ago. Cold pressed watercolor paper is just more gnarly. It's, it's like the foothills and then the cold pressed, I mean the hot pressed paper is just like the smooth plains and maybe, um, I don't know what kind of paper would be the mountains. Maybe Maybe paper, paper mache, something you may... Anyways, it, work, I work, it works a lot better for this sort of thing where I want to do the pen, pen work after I do the, the water coloring because the pen doesn't have to bump along over all the ridges and ruddles. And I have noticed, however, that it doesn't seem to do quite as well with a big um, sloppy washes. That's the only thing. And I don't know if it's my fault either, because I feel like this is top of the line paper here. It's Arches paper, right? That's as good as it gets. This stuff is super expensive. This was uh, sent to me by a viewer. Thank you very much. Um, I'm very spoiled. But it like it starts getting uh, it starts like pilling up a little bit. You know what I mean? Like it starts getting like a little fuzzier than it was before. But it holds up. It does fine. We just, once you let it dry, it seems to be okay. For this one, I did the background first. Did like a pale green wash, uh, just a field of green, and then on top of that, before the, the 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 last skinless beast I did, I I did the beast, and then I tried to come in and do the background behind it, which was a little bit of a pain, of course, right? Trying to go up to the edges all delicately and carefully. But this one, I to the background and then just drew the beast on top of it and it seemed to work okay i think it worked great for the color scheme here i was wearing a rainbow my tie-dye rainbow hoodie and i was streaming and i was sitting there trying to just trying to pick the first color racking my brain there's too many colors to pick from probably like 24 colors way too many even if some of them are just various grays and browns all the browns have cool names like Burnt Sienna and Raw Umber. Very cool. Anyway, so someone said, close your eyes and point to a spot on your hoodie. I think they called it a sweater, but it's, if anything, it's a hooded sweatshirt. I guess that's what hoodie is short for. Anyway, so I closed my eyes, my eyes, my eyes, and I waggled my finger around in the air and I plunged it down onto myself. It landed somewhere right around here. Can you hear that? Can you hear where here is? I'm pointing to a spot on my shoulder, uh, which was a very purpley spot amidst some pink. And so I chose purple. Um, I don't know what color, what the color was called. All these have very, all these paints have very f fancy colors with long words. I guess it's the name of the pigments. Uh, so I went the purple. And then as I continued to choose colors to go along with them, I just kind of continued on with my hooded sweatshirt. Uh, see, so I, you know, with what other ever colors were there next to it, because the sweatshirt looks good, and so why not, why not go with that vibe? Anyways, once I was done with the water coloring, I took my rotring isograph point something or other, and did the line work, and then did the hatch marks, and then we did the labels. Uh, the labels, you know, most of these are just off, off the top of the head, the, off the tip of the noggin. They, uh, the stream uh, helped a, a lot with some of them. All sorts of crazy ideas there, but don't read into it too much. I 
it's the craziest thing. A, a carbuncle? I, I, I thought this word was from Sherlock Holmes. There, I, I remember when I was young reading a story about Sherlock Holmes and the adventure of the blue carbuncle or something like that. But as soon as I said carbuncle and thought about writing it down, everybody reeled back, uh, appalled and c completely grossed out. Like I'd said something awful. I'm like, what? It's like some sort of precious stone or gem or something, right? Am I wrong? And they all act like I was wrong. Apparently the more common usage is, well, probably something I shouldn't mention, but it's like some sort of cluster of pustules or something. Clustules, pustules. They're, they're cooler words than they are. It's funner to say than it is to have one, I'm sure. Anyways, it's fine. I'm sorry for mentioning it. Will you, will you hereby accept my apology that I formally offered to you for talking about the, the, the nasty version of a carbuncle? Just think about a cool carbuncle, the gem, and how fun it is to say carbuncle. Carbuncle. Say it. It's a thing. I know it is. Anyways, anyways, I labeled it. This is, uh, wait, what did it end up getting called? Hold on. I'm getting it out of the scanner. It's, uh, we ended up calling this foul, fabulous beast the Grimpling Glastiosaur. And it's gonna, and it's uh, kind of in a series, you know, like these, the last one I made was called a Great Skinless Schlorper. They could be friends. I don't know if they're even the same size or um, if they even exist, or maybe did exist, because this one I labeled that an image of the ancient Grimpling Glastiosaur, so maybe it's like something that used to exist, I don't know. Uh, I have to do more research. Maybe examine the fossil record. Who knows? Examine the... I wrote colored daguerreot daguerreotype down here, and I looked up how to spell that very carefully, because I was like, this is a tough word, daguerreotype, right? That's an early type of photograph. And I was so... You know how sometimes when you try too hard, it become you're almost assured to fail. It's better when you just take it a little more casually. That's what happened with me writing daguerreotype. I wrote it with two G's because I was thinking so hard about how there were two R's later in the word. That really, that really messed me up mentally. I was tossing and turning all night, dreaming about misspelling words with just like just doubling every letter, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, maybe this is like a little series. More colorful, skinless beasts. All right, well, that's it for me. I'm gonna go, uh, I think I have some, some, uh, I think it's peach mango juice that I, well, I splurged on. Gonna treat myself to, uh, is three glasses, well, my first glass was a small one because I didn't know if I liked it. Is two and a half glasses of peach mango juice too much in one day? It's not going to give me the runs, is it? Oh, I'm sorry. Look, I just feel comfortable with all of you. Like, anyways, thank you for watching, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. You're all doing really well, by the way. You're doing great. Whatever you're struggling with, you're going to overcome it. That's what my fortune cookie, cookie says about you. All right, goodbye. Goodbye.